Greetings, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Saturday to you. I hope you are doing well on this. Well, it's a bit cloudy here on my side of town, uh, but hopefully you're doing well on this Saturday morning. My name is Rod Alexander, and I am the Program Quality Director for District 44, and I'm excited to welcome you to our Pathways Action Academy Level 3. Now, if you have been a part of levels one and two, then you know just how important and crucial and informative these sessions are. Our goal this year is to really help our members become more comfortable with using pathways and really helping them to identify all the areas in which pathways can assist them in their lives, not just personally, but professionally as well. With that being said, I am going to turn it over to our Pathways Chair who will lead us in our Level 3 learning. Please help me welcome to the camera, Toastmaster Latanya McLean. Hello, fellow Toastmasters. Welcome to Level 3. Let's go. Our vision is to help everyone learn how to maximize the usage of pathways to get the most benefit and value out of this program as we are all evolving together. Listen, Pathways is our worldwide educational program. It stores and tracks our path's journey across five levels. We wanna help you optimize your path so you need to learn the project objectives, match those objectives to your work, life, and community activities, and then apply those in a real life or mock scenario so you can explore those ideas and receive the credit for all of the work you're already doing in and outside of Toastmasters. Go ahead and log into your Toastmasters account, enter your email and password, and enter. Click on the welcome menu, which is your name, and then down to the profile to access the quick access for entering into your curriculum. So if you're a dual member, you're going to start here and select the club you'd like to enter and then click go. You will land on the Pathways homepage. If you want a shorter direct entry, click on the enrolled path under step two or go to my transcript. Either way, we're gonna move on over to the paths and learning page. We're on level three, we made it whole day. All right, let's go. Schedule your success, get on the agenda, check your calendar. You get credit for a speech project in the club or a meeting role in the club, Toastmaster of the day, table topics master, general evaluator, speech evaluator, timer, grammarian, or a counter either of the seven roles. Listen, we are going to continue to increase your knowledge. You will never stop learning. Your paths are identified with a two letter designation. For example, dynamic leadership or innovative planning, IP, and visionary communication, VC. So once you complete your levels, the denotion of completion, for example, level, since we're on level three, talking about level three, the last completion was level two. So your name will be identified first, then the path designation, and then the level of completion. So first name, last name, visionary communication, for example, is your path, and you've completed level two. And that's what it will show up as on the district reports. If you have your DTM, that will not change. I wanna let you know to update your club's agenda. If you're a club officer, in the left-hand corner of our agenda, our name again will be first, then the path designation and completion level for all club officers. Usually we have this on our agenda. I'm not sure if it's on the free toast host uh, method of agendas, but I'm sure you can, once you update it in your, as your profile, it should reflect on the agenda. Level three contains three task items, 
but three projects that we must do. Let's count them here. So you have your first project and then two electives and then submit. You can see on the path completion accurately stated here, 62% completed with your path and 100% completed with level three. Did you know, of course, we just said that there are three total projects for level three. One is required and two are electives. The required project is path specific. Now, also something to note when you're in base camp is if you click on these some random things you should know, you click on the house icon, it'll take you back to the base camp homepage. So just remember, you can click that house icon. Base camp managers are club officers that are denoted as the base camp manager have the authorization to process awards. That is your president, your vice president, and your secretary. Your vice president's primary responsibility is to process the award. So that's the first go-to person. There's no time limit to completing your path. It does not expire. As long as you're a member and have active access, you can get into your pathways. Let's say you decided not to renew membership this year. We would hope you would not decide that. But let's say you life happens and that occurs. Whenever you come back in the next term, your path will reappear. It does not go away. It does not expire. Here's what I'm also excited about. Projects that are now unlimited can be done outside of the club environment through your external training um, process. Now, what does this mean? So in our legacy program, we were limited to two projects that we could complete outside of the club environment, any club, Toastmasters club environment. They have taken the cap off of that. It is unlimited is no longer two per 10 speeches. It is unlimited. This is so fabulous for legacy people. They should know that. How do you process an external request? So on your Paths and Learning page, there's an ellipse, three ellipses here. The ellipse is on the right-hand side. Click that, drop-down menu occurs, add external training. You will see your form basically as to who, what, when, where, how, and you're going to answer these questions, put it in English as your language, put a brief description of the assignment for your transcript. We'll show you what that looks like in a second. Describe what you're going to be doing as the assignment and specify who is going to help you finish that. What is the scope of time? You define that. What path you're working under? what project, and when do you plan to, where do you plan to do this? Any other support documentation, you can select a file and upload it here. Hit the submit button in the right corner. That name you gave as a brief description shows up here. For example, test brief description. Give it a name that you like to see every time you come in here and view your transcript. So for example, engaging humor, very Quick and simple, two words, doesn't have to be a long description. Okay, click on view training and off you go. Also, did you know, level three is where you can obtain your DTM project. There is a restriction. You have to have completed a path first, one path, and then completed in the second path, the first three levels. Upon completion of the third level, send an email request to educationprogram at toastmasters.org. Hey, can you give me my DTM project, please? And then they'll say, sure. They'll send it right on over to the transcript and you will be able to go under the suggested learning, tap on that and it will pop to the transcript. Headquarters or TI is what we call Toastmasters International. They will update the transcript, not your base camp manager. Your base camp manager only processes Pathways Mentor Program, DTMs, and levels. The administrator at to Toastmasters International will process the DTM project start to finish. Now, the project requirement for the DTM, DTM project, if you are so interested, 
to do this project to get your DTM. It must add value to the organization, and it doesn't have to be for a nonprofit organization. So, for example, being the Pathways chair person this year is my DTM project. I'm getting my second DTM, and I have to have a commitment of at least six months, okay? For dual members, at the beginning where we said there's a drop down menu and then you click on that and select the club you want to work under for that particular project that you're working under, there are other benefits to doing that. So basically your members will be able to find you. So if you're a member of four clubs, you can't be in four places at one time, right? So you have to switch the button each time you want your members to award you a badge that we already said. We love badges. Oh, you were courageous, inspirational, whatever the badges options are, you can award those. So base camp managers are your, again, you're primarily your vice president of education and the president and secretary are your backup people. I had my person go home, my base camp. I'm the base camp manager in my home club. I'm the vice president of education. And my backup person was the president. <laughs> and she went home to India for a month. I said, no, I need to get my triple crown in on time. So I called upon my secretary. She said, I don't know how to do it. I said, well, I'll teach you. No problem. So you just show them what to do and they will get it done for you. Once an award is submitted through your base camp for approval, the base camp manager can see when you're signed into that club. So for example, what I'm trying to say there is that when you're signed into one of the clubs you're a member of as a dual member, that base camp manager can see that award. It may not be assigned your intention to assign it to that club, but it is definitely available to see. So be careful, communicate with your base camp manager to let them know, listen, this is for club ABC, not club XYZ. OK, because there's no way to lock in that path for a specific club at this time. Unfortunately, you must always communicate to make sure you assign the right credit to the right club. Remember, this is all a strategic thing. Also, as far as the measurements go and making sure we're all deemed a healthy club and members plus the membership, you must have membership. So we want all of our clubs in District 44 to receive at least five distinction points on the DCP and have accurate number of membership. So make sure you are strategic with assigning your awards. For our visually impaired members, there is a way that they are completing their pathways outside of the system through the access of assistive technology. So we don't provide that. They have that available to them already, but the base camp um, educational uh, program at Toastmasters International will provide a PDF via email for them to use their assistive technology with so that they can continue their pathways journey as well. They do not have access to the base camp uh, for that process. It is an English spoken version of videos in pathways. They can use the closed caption feature and download the transcripts. Any request for assistance, please send an email to educationprogram at toastmasters.org or give them a call at 720-439-5050. And any other materials can be requested from supply orders at toastmasters.org. And more information for Pathways Accessible Materials are found at toastmasters.org. Listen, self-development is a lifelong learning process. Chinese proverb says, tell me and I'll forget. Show me and I may remember, but if you involve me, I will understand. So let's talk about what to expect in level three. Let's look at the requirements. Now, you don't have to do all of these projects. These are the 11 projects reflected for the 11 paths we have. And we are working on level three, increasing your knowledge. Information plus experience is the knowledge you have. 
we're going to be talking about develop a communication plan, engage your audience with humor, make connections through networking, negotiate the best outcome, persuasive speaking, planning and implementing, present a proposal, reaching consensus, successful collaboration, understanding conflict resolution, and understanding emotional intelligence. Let's talk about these in the order of the paths that are listed. Let's start with the dynamic leadership path, negotiate best outcome. So it focuses on identifying negotiation styles, engaging in mutually beneficial discussions, and finding and building common ground. And the purpose is for you to learn about different types of negotiation and the strategies that can be used when negotiating. So you're going to reference the negotiation goal setting resource in your project. Choose re to reflect on the strategies about a past or upcoming negotiation in your life. See, these are all life applicable, right? Craft your speech in any style that appeals to you and supports the content speech for which you are using for persuasive or humorous or informational. Your time requirement for your story is five to seven minutes. Go ahead and sign up that finish the project completion form and off it goes to the VPE. Avoid regurgitating the project content. You want to be able to incorporate those concepts into your story. Let's talk about effective coaching path. They have to do reaching a consensus. So they focus on, this project focuses on reaching consensus and the importance of including all group members in the decision making process. You're gonna be working with a group to practice reaching a consensus on any topic. You're gonna lead a group of people towards that consensus using a topic that would offer a challenge, but enable a consensus to be reached in the appropriate time frame. The time requirements for this project is 20 minutes. Now, it's okay if you don't reach 20 minutes. Sometimes in case you have to stop it at 20 minutes because it can go on and on and on. Then provide a two to three minute closing statement on the experience or decision to wrap it up. Now, let's say that's the club environment. But what about being in the community, a non-Toastmasters group? where you're gonna focus again, trying to get to 20 minutes or stop it at 20 minutes. Make sure you have a timer because that helps. And then provide a five to seven minute club speech after that experience. Your speech can be persuasive, humorous, informational, or crafted in any style that supports the content. Again, we wanna massage those concepts and work them into the story. The engaging humor path is talking about the engage your audience with humor. And the focus is on using humor to enhance the message you deliver in a speech. Determine your style of humor and apply it to a speech that centers around a central message. Now, this speech works really, really well. I'm sorry, this project works really well to study if you're a humorous speech contestant. Make sure you include one antidote or story intended to entertain or bring humor into the presentation. The time requirements, again, is five to seven minutes on your point of view and what makes things funny to you. Everybody's funny is different. <laughs> again, incorporate those concepts into the project, um, of the project into your story. The innovative planning path is present a proposal. This introduces how you select key information to present in a proposal to build a case with supporting evidence and realistic solutions. The purpose is to develop the proposal to improve any area of your life. I love that these are life applicable. It may involve your personal or professional life or your Toastmasters Club. And if it does involve your Toastmasters Club, let's say you want to help pre present a proposal to your vice president of membership to, let's say, go to the mall and, you know, with permission, of course, or go somewhere in front of an establishment to promote Toastmasters for 
a, a Saturday. And you need to consult that vice president of membership. This is what you propose to do so that everybody's working in collaboration. You're going to go ahead and develop that proposal. Use the writer proposal resource to help you and construct a five to seven minute speech and share that at the club and different aspects of the proposal, or you can, you can share the entire proposal, okay? Leadership development path, planning and implementing. All right, so this one is designed to help you develop realistic plans to meet your objectives and to successfully monitor a project to completion. The purpose is to develop and implement a plan for a small scale project, like a family trip, or a party or any type of celebration with or without anybody helping you, okay? So that is your goal. You're gonna use the project plan and event planning worksheet to assist you. Now I use the event planning worksheet to help on my managing a successful project in level four. I use this project so I could find some space for the Auntie Hour project, TV auntiehour.tv project that I was working on a few months back. So that was great. It is perfect to help you with planning, okay? The time requirement is to present a two to three minute report or you could do a five to seven minute speech. It is up to you, okay? The motivational strategies project path. The project is understanding emotional intelligence. I'm going to tell you about this one. <laughs> you will definitely an analyze yourself. So this one addresses elements of emotional intelligence and is designed to help you understand your own emotions and the emotions of others. And the purpose is to cultivate an understanding of how your emotions impact your relationships. And it is used also to design to help you identify others' emotions impact on your emotional state. So you're looking at the effects of these relationships, the relationship to you and the relationship to others and how, how you feel is affecting you throughout the day. Isn't that amazing? So you're going to evaluate yourself for two weeks and what's been happening in your life journal that and discuss those emotions. You're going to track those, uh, the impact of those emotions. Now, you're not required to say personal details in the club in your story, but some overarching, I would do it from a lessons learned perspective. You can do it the way you want, but it helps to eliminate all the personal aspects, mostly from being too detailed. So you want that higher level of experience to share in the in your story in the club okay I learned a lot I learned oh yeah that's why I was feeling that way you know you learn a lot about yourself in this project persuasive influence explores understanding conflict resolution the per project is designed to introduce conflict resolution strategies and to provide an opportunity to resolve a conflict scenario within an interactive activity the purpose is to develop and enhance your understanding of the steps and strategies to address that conflict. You're going to be looking at a video activity in this project about conflict resolution. Now, when you develop your story, your story can be humorous, informational, or any style that works for you. But be sure to include the impact of the video activity. Your time requirements, of course, is five to seven minutes and discuss how you manage the conflict, how you can develop a stronger strategy, and what are your best attributes in a conflict situation. Incorporate those project lessons and concepts into your story, okay? Presentation mastery. Persuasive speaking is our focus. It's going to be helping you to develop and support a viewpoint and identify the most appropriate type of persuasive speech for your topic. The purpose is to understand the types of persuasive speeches and deliver a persuasive speech at the club meeting. You're going to use the persuasive speech outline worksheet. Choose any topic that works for this project to help you speak persuasively. Submit an external training request. Now that's optional. You can do this in the club or you can do it outside of the club. 
If you do it outside of the club, be sure to invite a fellow Toastmasters so that they can provide a written evaluation on your form. Strategic relationships, making connections through networking. This project focuses on how to network effectively and understand the importance of being prof a professional ally to people in your own network. The purpose is to develop and practice a personal strategy for building connections through networking. You're gonna to refer to the Prepare to Network resource. Prepare and attend a networking event. So you can look at something like meetup groups or something like that, or Facebook have opportunities and activities, and you can prepare to go to one of those. Make sure you do your five to seven minute experience, your story, your speech, after your event. Now, what you want to do is describe what you learned and discuss or discuss the benefits of networking. It could be personal or informational. Team collaboration. You're going to be learning about successful collaboration. This project focuses on the benefit of collaboration, building an environment of trust, and encouraging creative debate within a group. The purpose is to introduce and review strategies for working in a collaborative group. You're gonna be working with a small team on a small scale event, like planning a celebration or a club meeting. Use the team building activities resource and develop your five to seven minute speech about the experience of collaborating. Visionary communication, develop a communication plan. A lot of people don't think setting the intention for your conversation is important or maybe not aware of doing that, but this helps you develop or formulate a central message and develop a communication plan for a targeted audience and practice continually developing those communication plans. You're going to refer to the write a communication plan resource to help you and create a communication plan for any mock or real scenario in any situation. Speak about the planning process or, develop, or benefits of developing a plan or discuss the impact of your plan if you implement it. Speak about that of an experience either from work, home, or in your community. So let's talk about level three electives. Active listening, connect with storytelling, connect with your audience, creating effective visual aids, deliver social speeches, effective body language, focus on the positive, inspire your audience, know your sense of humor, make connections through networking, prepare for an interview, researching and presenting, understanding vocal variety, using descriptive language, and using presentation software. Remember, we said there are three projects at level three, two or electives for you to choose to help you increase your knowledge. So let's start with active listening. So the paths, all paths do the active listening project, but in levels three, it applies to all paths except motivational strategies, persuasive influence, strategic relationships, and team collaboration. I wonder if anybody can tell me why that is. My brain just turned on on a Saturday. No questions, Tanya. Okay, we'll save them for later. The reason why <laughs> is because for these four paths, it's a level two requirement. Okay, eventually everybody does it. So that covers the difference between listening and hearing and exploring the ways listening helps to build strong, lasting connections. And the purpose is for you to demonstrate your ability to listen to what others say. Again, I'm working on this project over and over and over again. Serve as your table topics master in your club. You want to listen to each of the table topics respondents, jot down the notes that you want to then provide as your feedback in a brief response immediately following each respondent. Okay, you want to focus on about 30 to 45 seconds for your feedback, staying mindful of the club's time. 
right? You want to explain how well each respondent was able to deliver their responses in a one to two minute speech, because that's what the impromptu speeches are, one to two minutes, using and integrating those basic public speaking mechanics like great eye contact with the audience. You were able to engage the audience. Your message was clear when you discuss your three points, et cetera. See, you're incorporating all the basic mechanics of public speaking. Connect with storytelling. This applies to all paths, addresses the storytelling techniques and descriptive skills to help make every speech relatable and interesting. The purpose is for you to practice a story within using a story within a speech or giving a speech that is a story. You're going to choose to establish a story, a story about your life or a fictional tale of your own creation in a five to seven minute speech. All paths are affected by connect with your audience, except engage in humor and innovative planning. This project focuses on the different audience types and how to address them effectively. And the purpose is for you to practice the skills needed to connect with an unfamiliar audience. You're gonna develop a topic that is unfamiliar to your club members in order to practice adapting as you present. You, body language is what, 90% of communication. And you wanna watch for those reactions, then adjust the way you connect to your audience. You're going to monitor that and then develop your story. All paths are have the option to choose effective visual aid. This one addresses effective methods for choosing the best visual aids for your presentation along with the creation and use of each type. And the purpose is for you to practice selecting these visual aids during a speech. So the max we suggest in this project is about three visual aids. So you want to think about which three most provide the most impact for telling your story or enhancing your story. Okay, and choose a topic that lends to that ability to then insert those visual aids in your five to seven minute story. All paths have the option to choose deliver so social speeches. This particular project addresses the skills needed to compose a speech for different occasions in a social environment, like a toast or a eulogy. I had a member join our club because she wanted to give her coworker the best home go going possible, she felt, well, after the fact, because they were at the funeral, and she felt like I should have done better. And I'm gonna go to Toastmasters to improve that because I don't want that to happen to another friend should that occur or another coworker. So I thought that was an awesome way or reason to join our group to really improve your public speaking skills, to be able to deliver in any setting. What about an acceptance speech or providing praise to a group or an individual? And you're going to practice these social speeches in your club in front of your members. And you have to develop two of these because they're only three to four minutes a piece. So use the social speech basis, spa basics resource and make sure you remember that these are two requirements within this project, three to four minutes each. You also have a choice of choosing the effective body language from all of the paths except presentation mastery. Why is that, you may ask? Because this project is a requirement for level two in presentation mastery. So if you notice the pattern so far, if it's not a requirement for certain paths, it's because in level three as an elective, it's because it's a requirement in level two. But eventually they all kind of swap around. The purpose of this pro the project focus here is to recognize the body language when, used, when you use it speaking publicly and how to use gestures to enhance your speech content. Remember, I think it was level one, we talked about body gestures, whether they hurt or help your speech. 
okay? To deliver this speech, your purpose is to deliver this speech with awareness of your intentional and unintentional body language and refine how you use those nonverbal communication cues when delivering a speech. This is great for your evaluator and your timer, your all counter, your grammarian to help you figure these out as well in a club. So you're going to select that topic that lends the ability for you to express movement and gestures and use a mirror or some type of visual recorder to see yourself and get that feedback from your mentor or fellow Toastmaster and then practice, practice, practice and deliver those uh, speech, that speech after you make those adjustments in the club. Focus on the positive applies to all paths. The project addresses strategies for improving your personal interactions by understanding the impact of your attitudes and thoughts on a daily uh, basis and your daily interactions. And the purpose is to be aware of your thoughts and feelings, as well as the impact of those responses on others. Keep a daily log of your moods and attitudes for a minimum of two weeks and noting how you feel when you feel positive or negative and your successes and your efforts to to alter your behavior and choose those three things for which you are grateful record and evaluate any changes in your behavior or the behavior around you complete your five to seven minute story which highlights any aspect of your experience now the time requirement of the speech is a five to seven minute speech or a two to three minute report, okay? All paths can also choose inspire your audience. This was our 10th speech in our legacy program and it closed out as an eight to 10 minute speech. Now it's a five to seven minute speech. It addresses how to present a speech in an enthusiastic and inspiring fashion to establish a strong rapport with your audience and get you to practice and deliver speech that inspires others. This particular project, if you're in the international speech contest, I would suggest you look at this one. It definitely helps you construct that winning speech. Select a topic that lends to an inspiring speech, okay, that, uh, that you can deliver to your audience. Five to seven minutes. This particular project, Know Your Sense of Humor, applies to all paths except for engaging humor because Know Your Sense of Humor is a level two requirement in engaging humor, but it is available as our elective in level three. It focuses on understanding what makes you laugh and how to share that with an audience. It also begins developing, you will begin developing a collection of humorous stories and present a speech that includes humor include at least one antidote or story intended to entertain or bring humor into the presentation in five to seven minutes. Making connections through networking. This applies to all paths except for strategic relationships, and we already know why. Project focuses on how to network effectively and understand the importance of being a professional ally to people in your network. And the purpose is to develop and practice a personal strategy for building those connections through networking. You're going to refer to the Prepare to Network resource and attend all networking events. Attend a networking event, share that post-event story or stories about your experience and describe what you learned or discuss those benefits of networking. It can be personal or informational in a five to seven minute story. Prepare to interview as an elective for all paths. Your project will identify and speak about the personal strengths and present yourself well in an interview of any type. Your goal is to present yourself well, so you need to practice those skills. And you want to determine which type of interview you want to do in practice, such as a job interview or expert interview. Prepare by reviewing your skills and abilities so you can practice answering those questions to promote those skills, abilities, and experience. You wanna select two members to help you, want to interview you and want to evaluate you, two different people. Refer to the interviewer, interviewer instructions and identifying your skills worksheet as your project resource to help you 
present the best information possible and give that to your interviewer before the presentation in a five to seven minute role play. Researching and presenting, this applies to all paths unless this version of path, the path that you have was previously before October 27, 2021. So this is from the first version. If you have it in your first version, level one, then fine, you do it there. But in the newer paths, it becomes a level three requirement. So either way, you have, the, have it in your path. This one addresses the topic selection strategies, suggests for research and methods for producing a well-organized speech. The purpose is to learn and review the basic research methods and present a well-organized and well-researched speech on any topic. Select a topic that you're not familiar with or something that you wanted to learn about and narrow the scope so it fits the time frame of five to seven minutes and refer to those resources that are available in this project the research worksheet, and the speech outline worksheet. Understanding vocal variety is in every path. This focuses on the importance of vocal variety when giving your speech and provides activities to develop, to develop and nurture its use. And you want to practice vocal variety to enhance a speech. Review the important importance of vocal variety and use those exercises in the project to improve, let's say, your vocal variety skills, let's say rate of speed, your breath control, effective pauses, inflection, deflection, and the list continues. You want to present a five to seven minute story that enhances those aspects. Use descriptive language applies to all paths as an elective. If this one addresses the difference between literal and figurative language, along with how to determine when to use each in a creative, the vivid description. You want to practice writing a speech with an emphasis of adding language to increase interest and impact. You want to punch it up with those descriptives. Incorporate your senses and environment to describe your story. So think of a movie and how they make you feel like you're in the movie, that's what you want to do with the story. You want to make gifts as much description of the setting around you, the feelings around you, so it allows us to be drawn into the story that you're telling in five to seven minutes. That's a great project. I like that project. This one is using presentation software. It applies to all paths because we all need to learn how to present our stories and information. This one addresses the use of presentation software from identifying topics that benefit from the use of technology to effective slide design and presentations. And the purpose is to introduce us to and review the basic presentation strategies for creating and using slides to support and enhance our, or enhance our speech. Now, I use Canva and PowerPoint as a way to present visually. You can also, and I'm sure there are other options out there as well, use your content, use the content of this project and your own research to help you develop your slides. It can be humorous, just demonstrative, informative, and it may include any stories or antidotes and present in a five to seven minutes story. So what else you need to know about level three? Well, there are 15 electives, but not all paths present 15 electives. Some paths have 14 electives, other paths have 13 electives. <laughs> so it depends. And we know why that is. It's because they swap from required levels in other, like level two or level one. So, but there are 15 electives overall. What if I complete more than the two minimum required I'm glad you asked that question. So let's see how that affects you. Let's say you completed being the table topics master in the club and you went for a job interview. You're practicing for your upcoming job interview. So the creative effective visual aids and using a presentation software will have to be added in another path because we know you only get two electives at, that counts towards completion, right? So you might as well dump the other two in another path, path two or path three, etc. 
see our YouTube channel, Choose a Path on D44 Pathways channel. So we are continuing our six-week plan, weeks 13 through 18, and we're dropping in our presentation mastery requirements and electives from a communication and leadership skill set. And we finish our goal here of our seven roles in the club. And I wanted to point out, you can start, you can do another meeting role that you've done before. Let's say you've served as Toastmaster of the day and you've counted that in your base camp and that's fine. And you decided to sign up for it and again, you don't have to update the base camp manager, not the base camp manager, <laughs> your base camp profile. You don't have to update that again. You can if you want to. If you want to stay current, that's great. I've updated mine. I'm done updating it. That's me personally. But it is optional. Just wanted to let you know it was optional. You want to make sure you finish out your week and stay on track and be successful. Update your pathways tracking form as well. We are working on level three. And this is expanded because for from a base camp manager's perspective, yours will look individually. You won't have these names in there. So this is for the base camp manager to track if they so desire which levels and paths that their members are working on. But yours is right here. You put your, if you are using the pathways tracking form, it's already devised uh, designed for you. So, you. so you just select, select your tab that applies to the path and drop in when you finished it and which elective you've chosen and put that on your pathways tracking form. Okay. Listen, trade your expectation for appreciation and the world changes instantly. That's Tony Robbins quote. Make sure you appreciate those club members that are completing their levels and award them a badge. Select their name. That's another reason dual members need to be pointed towards the club so they can receive a badge. Then those badges will show up in their My Badges uh, section. Once they complete levels three, that would also show up here. If they have a level, a number two here or three, it's because two level twos or two level threes have been completed, okay? But you will see your badge for level three completed here. You and your club will benefit when you complete your personal goals of speaking and leading. Once you complete each level or your DTM or your Pathways Mentor Program, your base camp manager approves these through base camp and processes them in Club Central. And the levels and DTMs are applied to the DCP for credit. Again, we're trying to get everybody to have at least five throughout the district so they can be a distinguished club. Now we know the Pathways Mentor Program counts toward the district incentives as Triple Crown or Super Achiever. Triple Crown is achieving three awards, let's say levels two and three. And then the Pathways Mentor Program does three. You get your Triple Crown. Five awards are required for the super achiever plus two people to mentor, okay, which is the whole great point about completing the Pathways Mentor Program from the last training. So on our DCP point, we get a point here for two members completing level three. Isn't that cool? And it's shown up here on your DCP, on your DC, we call it the DCP. So on your DCP form, it is number four for the education section to complete, have two members complete uh, their level three. On this side of the goal, this is what needs to take place in the club. To date is what has taken place in the club so far. Listen, you cannot fail in Toastmasters. There's no A or F grading system. We want you to review the benefits of Toastmasters. It takes you showing up each meeting that you can attend. You need to practice and put in the effort to get out what you want to receive. 
I want to thank all of our Pathways champions for helping today and the people that are unable to come today. We also want to add your name down here and issue a challenge to you to join us as a Pathways champion. To champion, let's say, your home club. We have five trainings and you want to get trained and continue to pass this great message on to your club members. I would love to hear feedback from you. Go ahead and email me at pathways at d44toastmasters.org and we'll get back to you. You can also go to our Pathways YouTube channel, like and subscribe, help us out and continue to learn and spread this great message of Pathways throughout our district. And you can find more information on the D44 website, d44toastmasters.org website. And I welcome your questions and thank you for coming today. Any questions? Hey, Gwen, there's Gwen again. I know you got some questions. <laughs> I, I do. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> good, okay, good, good. Your, okay, oh, your... I'm sorry. I skipped Gwen. I saw Victoria. I'm sorry. Victoria. Oh, yeah. Let's do Victoria and then we'll come to Gwen. Okay. okay. And Lena is on chat. So any questions in the chat, that'd be great. All right. What was your question, Victoria? Sorry about that. Was that a hand clap or a raise a hand? I must have messed up. Okay, Gwen. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. On your question about the IT from listening, we have the table topic and you have to go back and answer the question. Okay. Yes. Speaking five to seven minutes. Okay. You do the table topic in, in, in a time with it or you only get the answer back when you're doing your table and doing your IT listening part. So how you, how do you time that? I sure hope I did not make that mistake, Ms. Gwen. That is not a five to seven minute speech for active listening. Active listening role is the table topics master role so you know in table topics you may you know when you call up a speaker yes you ask them the question yes and usually they're like oh yeah that's great and then they sit down or they you know you get ready to move to the next person so the way the project is asked what they're asking you to do is do that same process ask them the question they come to the front to answer mm -hmm. or, or spotlight on zoom they answer you jot down your response that you're in other words you're their evaluator okay and you're going to evaluate i would say about 30 seconds per person 30 to 45 seconds per person immediately upon their response so normally we do in the club meeting we'll do speaker speak question speaker question speaker question speaker right yes right? okay so this is question speaker evaluation question speaker evaluation does that make more sense you're evaluating the speaker right after their response okay that's why i got confused with because when i'm doing like i can six the, the part about the they let the friend do act and listen. So I asked the question, then they gave me the answer. So I thought I had to give a feedback. And I figured, how are they going to do what my, what my, doing my speech with the thoughts, you know, the speech that part? That's what kept getting confused. Right. So did that clear it up? Yeah, it's so, clear it up. Okay. But you still had the little frown thing right in the middle. I oh, do I? Okay. <laughs> I'm making sure you're good. Did anybody else have that question? Let's see if I can see. You, when you do that presentation, you are the table topic master at that time. Yeah. And you answer the question and you evaluate the answer from the person that's speaking. So, Tanya, it may be a little confusing to use the word evaluation because you're really not doing an evaluation. You're making a comment and proving that you're listening and heard what they said and understood or it's just really just a comment for 30 seconds. Semantics. Oh, it is a comment for semantics is what we are all about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that is that clear because it's more of a comment. Yeah, it's clear, but it's the part when I was going, you know, I had to put that thing as I would do my speech, you know, the um on the let I had to listen and I would table top it and when it came back and um uh, 
I think it was like had to be within the five to seven minutes. And I, and I went over the five to seven minutes when I had to get to respond by it. That's why I was trying to figure out how the time and all that go in with that at the time. But I think I understand what you're saying now. Yeah, uh, let's see here. I wanted to make sure that, okay, okay. Um, first of all, it's not a five to seven minute speech. It's not a sp once big speech that you do, okay? okay? You're serving as table topics master. And you're just making a comment like Fran was saying and Linda was saying after each responding of how well they answered the question. That makes sense? Yeah, I got you. Okay, cool, cool. All right, any other questions? Any in the chat, Lena? Oh, I'm just posting the uh, information for active listening on the chat box. Okay. The example of what the topic masters should be doing. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much like make a short affirming statement, like a recap of mm -hmm. what the table topic speaker spoke. So, yeah, it, it, it does, it's a comment, it's a recap, but it doesn't, what you don't want to do is try to repeat what they said verbatim throughout your evaluation or your comment. So the goal is to say how well they did using the basic public speaking mechanics. You had great eye contact when you were responding, you, when you were talking about you, four seasons of Georgia and you engage the audience. So you're using those concepts of public speaking to help comment on how well they answered the question, whatever the answer is and whatever the question is. Okay, right. And I and my the reason why I said evaluation friend was because that's the role we do in our home club. So my mistake, we actually use this as an evaluator role. Okay on an ongoing basis, on a weekly basis. So my bad. Okay, cool. Any other questions? Marianne, tell us how this has helped you. Do you did you know much about level three? Have you are you on level three? I'm on level three just now. But I'm very bad on pathways. I I don't know what to upload and do the different things. I have not really done anything. And I did I had a speech uh, we are on Tuesday, not this two, not, it will be two weeks on Tuesday. And the evaluator said that they had to mail the forms to me because he couldn't scan. And I have not received the forms. I wonder if they sent them or if they are looked in the post office. That's a great question as far as the evaluation form for the project. So it's not mailed in. I don't know. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm about, about to tell you right now. So basically, you can access your forms in two ways that I know, and I'm sure Lena and Fran will help me fill in the gaps. So one of the things when we are in our project, it goes, when I kept saying resource, resource, basically it's the evaluation form. Mm -hmm. okay. And so in when you get into your project, on the bottom, you can, it's a drop down menu, tap that, scroll down and go to my, I think it says my evaluation or evaluation resource and tap that. The form is there for you to download to your desktop or yeah. computer and then for, forward for email that to your evaluator in so advance. The problem is that we, we were, we were uh, it was when we were online, virtual, and he's in Nashville and I am in Atlanta. So I sent him the evaluation form, but the problem is that I have not received it back. He has not sent it back to me from Nashville. Oh, he hasn't returned it, and yeah. he put the comments on there. Yeah. Okay, so let me finish answering the, what I thought was the question, and then I'll answer that one. So the other way to access the evaluation form outside of the account, the other problem we were having is when we tried to share the evaluation form, and, and we were in the account when we shared the evaluation form. And then when we tried to use it, it gave us an error message because we were outside it. We were not logged in. To avoid that problem, because we kept having that issue, is to go directly to the Toastmasters.org website, click into the search bar, evaluation resources, 
and download the form put in there. It'll say evaluation resources. Don't take that out of the keyword search. Then add to that whatever project you're working on, put active listening, and boom, it pops the form up. And you can write it in on the form from there. All right, so that's that answer to what I thought was the question. Marianne, kindly send him an email to say, I have yet to receive my evaluation feedback from you. I would you. Him see him on Tuesdays. I would ask him because. Okay, or just haul off and send him an email today so it's in his queue to say, I oh, I got it. I don't if I have his email. Because oh, okay. Okay, I see. If you have a club <laughs> officer, if you club if you have a club officer and he's in your club and he's located in Nashville, ask the club officer to email on your behalf because they have access to the roster and just kind of took took that, you know, I don't think that bear. It's active on the roster. Okay. Yeah. Okay, but you'll see him on Tuesday and ask him. Okay. Put it put it on your calendar as a task item to make sure you remember. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But that's the problem. I mean, because he said I don't have a scanner and you know, they live outside and so on, so he couldn't go anywhere. So I would mail it and give me your address. So I did. And um, no, we don't have to mail anything anymore. Another way he can mail it to you per se digitally is to download the one of the scanner apps and then have the phone and just you know take a picture of it. Through the scanner yeah, app, I and I asked him, but he said, oh, "Email it." He couldn't do that. He didn't yeah, do. some some fears are hard to get over. I feel them on that one. It so, took me a Tanya, minute. Can I yep. chime in here for a second? Yep. Um, also, wanted to offer another method. Um, so, whenever you're using that, whenever you're using that form, the evaluation form, and you're typing into it, the easiest way to get that over to someone is to do a print to PDF. So you're gonna click print, just like you're going to print it as if you had a printer. However, when you get to the section where it's asking you what printer you want to use, click the drop down and select Microsoft to PDF. And what that'll do is that'll take all of the information that you just saved, that you, you just typed, and save it as a PDF. And then you just save that document onto your desktop. And, e and then that person can email it to you. So you don't have to worry about downloading anything to your phone. And absolutely, not in 2022, giving strangers your email, your your home address. Uh, so, I don't know how it is because it's a mentally dangerous and it's not really good on computers. So, so I'm sure he just filled it in by hand. Oh, yeah, he did it by hand. Oh, okay. For anybody who may be, you know, anybody who may not necessarily know how to do that, but just know that. It can be sent electronically, even with you typing into the form. That's just another method. We may need to oh, yeah. um, put those but, instructions. I mean, he, he couldn't scan it back, so that's what the problem, right? And if he didn't fill it in on the computer because he just bought the form. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so I don't know. And even if it's his notes, all he uses is cam scanner, take a picture, it's a, it becomes a PDF. Yeah email it, share. So the other thing too, what we tell our club members to do is to go ahead and finish the evaluation in the club meeting, save it as a PDF and drop it in the chat, direct chat to the person while we're sitting here. And so we, we sometimes it's an immediate after the club, but sometimes it's right in the club meeting. So those are two, po several possibilities for you. Yeah, it's I'm not sure how familiar he is with those methods, what the problems. I mean, if he really knows how to do it, well, but maybe I, maybe that is something we should consider as another option to train. Yeah, like Rod said, so we'll we'll get to that as well. That's a good get somebody write that one down. We need to start helping people do the evaluation forms because then they can start using the e-portfolio section in Pathways to then upload it to their own section to save it there as well. Because if you, if you fill it in, I mean, you have to scan it in and it said, it does have a scanner. I said, if you could do it on the cell phone, but he said he was not sure. He said, I would just mail it to you. Yeah, um, he, yeah he would just have to go to get one of his grandkids or neighbors that's young and look like they carry their phone everywhere and sleep with it and just find one of those kids off the street 
and tell them, hey, come help me scan this <laughs> so I can get it to Marianne real quick. You know, I that's what I do. I'm like, hey, baby. That's what I do. I, I mean, need help. <laughs> I do it for my right? Yep. I have a scanner. But okay. it, it's just pulling it. And I have to do it. I said, I don't know what flip phone. Oh, yeah, that's another problem, flip phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I do have the path. I have the breakout rooms open for you. I'm not okay, sure. Great. Everyone, uh, if all of the champs are going, should all of the champs have their own room, or is somebody going to be doubling up? You're going to have to double up at this point. Okay. Well, there's there's a, enough champs to have a room for everyone. In, in oh, well, great. Do it the best way you know, because I, I can't really see all of the what's going on behind the scenes. Okay. Awesome. Okay, everyone. Well, what we're going to do now is we're going to give you a few moments or give you some time. You can use the rest of this time to, if you have some more in-depth questions or a few more things that you just need a little bit more clarification on, then this is your opportunity to have some one-on-one -on -one time with the Pathways Champion. So I'm going to open the breakout rooms, and I see Ann said that she does not need a room today, so thank you. If you don't need a room, Feel free to drop off and enjoy the rest of your Saturday. But for those who would like a little bit more time, we will go ahead and open up the breakout rooms for you and you can spend as much time as you need with the champion. Thank you all for those who watched online and thank you to those who will watch this in the future when you see the video. I hope you learned something and please take this back with your club and make sure that you're sharing all of these tips and tricks on how to become a Pathways Guru. I wanna thank our Pathways Chair, Latanya McLean, for putting on this dynamic training and making sure that we're our members are getting everything that they need in the way of Pathways. That being said, I'm gonna end the recording here.